I would like by first saying, why do patients, especially those who want to undergo surgery, why do they go for the best hands rather than people of their own affiliation, be it ethnical background, religious background, or sectional backgrounds? We would answer that in the course of our discussion. I'll be speaking on borderless politicking today. And as a politician of the younger demography, it is my duty to help us break away from how we do it before and how we should do it to be able to have a great nation. So let's define politics. I'll take my definition from a very rare angle. Um, an American comedian by name Groucho Marx did say, politics is looking for trouble, finding it everywhere, diagnosing it wrongly, and bringing up remedies, wrong remedies. That's what politics is, by applying the wrong remedies. That's his definition. When you think of these quotes as a Nigerian, I'm sure it brings it home closer. And even as we move on, we will understand that politics is funny. In fact, you find people who should stay away from politics being those who are in politics, having good ease of life in politics, while those who have the requisite leadership characteristics that should find themselves in politics stay far away from politics because they find it either dangerous, difficult, or uh, un un uninteresting because of the way we play it. There is another American actor of the last century that says the world is changing. In fact, people are beginning to take comedians more seriously and taking the politicians like jokers. That, if you are a Kogite, I can't say some politicians today are more like comedians. And you know what I mean when I say that. However, it ought not to be so. Politics is too important to be left the way it currently is in our country. Let's discuss Nigeria, Africa, and the role Nigeria plays in the African and black continents. Africa has a population of over 200 million people. Nigeria, sorry, has a population of over 200 million people. Africa has a population of 1.3 billion people. West Africa, our sub-region, has a population of about 400 plus million people. It means Nigeria alone accounts for half the population of West Africa. And if you look at that statistics of the over 400 million West African sub-region, we are a major economic, socio-political player. And that is why they say in some climes, when Nigeria sneezes, Africa catches cold. I want to agree with that. But are we really doing that? Is that, is, is, is that what is happening as at this moment? I doubt. And that would bring me to the fact that our Nigerian problem, if Nigeria sneezes, like they say, Africa catches cold, we play, that, we play that big. That's how big Nigeria plays in Africa. Next slide. One of our major problems as a country is our rich diversity, which ordinarily should be an asset. It can be very challenging. And because of this diversity, you find different voices moving at different angles and in different directions, and there's no cohesion 
for Nigeria to take its place in the Committee of Nations in the world. Next slide, please. So today, what do I come here with? I propose what I call politics without borders. And by this I mean we need to dismantle and remove the artificial checkpoints, like eliminating parochial sentiments of tribe, religion, and class. Borderless politicking sees the merit in a person and not where they come from, how they worship, or the circumstances of their birth. Borderless politicking throws down every barrier and embraces every cause of action that would be of benefit to every individual and section of the society. Next slide, please. So I'm here to advocate for this new kind of politics and to recommend that it becomes our main strategy to leapfrog this nation to good governance via forthright leadership I ask that we do it overnight, if possible, because there is no time to check time. Next slide, please. Next one. We can gain a shortcut to national unity if we succeed in breaking down the walls of dirty politics, which fosters mutual distrust. Among our demographics, and I'm talking to the younger generation, because like they say, you are the drivers. It may seem overly optimistic to believe we can get rid of politically induced division. But it is simple if we agree to work together. When we realize that we have no choice but to amputate the things that divide us or the nation dies, we realize just how much we are capable of when push comes to shove. I'm going to give us an illustration. And I must thank my elder brother from Mr. Noja for taking me through that medical exercise. Next slide, please. There is what they call craniotomy. It is also referred to as an awake brain surgery, where the patient would be alive to the surgery going on in his brain. Now, if the surgery site is near the parts of the brain that deals with your speech, your movement, uh, your, or your vision, the surgeon needs to be communicating with the patient whilst attending to the patient in his brain to be able to decipher whether the surgery is going on in the progressive direction or not. Our brain surgery is a high risk and the potential for complication or even death are quite sizable. Now imagine you are a patient who is to undergo this life and death surgery. Will you consider the tribe, gender, religion, or even the race of the surgeon? if he's the best and most competent hand available. Next slide. Or you would rather use your village doctor because he fits into your kind of sentiment of whatever shade you want to define it. Now, your ultimate preoccupation will be his qualification, expertise, experience, and track record in the past. Why not an incompetent surgeon of the same ethnic or religious coloration with you? The reason is simple. You want to stay alive. So you make your choice because you know life is involved. Your, your goal is to achieve success. Back. Your goal is to achieve success in the deliverables without any iota of primordial considerations. Next slide. This is the fulcrum of the mindset we advocate for borderless politics, of engagement in the selection or elections of our leaders. We can only get it right if we promote this trend of meritocracy over mediocrity. A case in point 
is very familiar with most of us. In 2015, a 39-year-old young man damned all the factors mitigating against leadership selection through the ballot box, along with his team, of which I was part of, journeyed through the length and breadth of Kogi State. He practicalized the concept of borderless politics and was able to supplant vested interest in the state. The result is what we have today spanning through two tenures and hopefully beyond. It's also important to state here that those same concepts and practices which have benefited Kogi State are totally scalable to the larger Nigerian polity. I strongly believe the future is bright for our nation and the black continent of Africa. But it is you who can make it happen. Today, I hear drums of war across the land. From the south-south, to the southeast, to the northeast, to the northwest, to the southwest. Drums of war. Borderless politics is here. We have two options. We must ensure it or we lose our nation. I call on all of us. Let's rise up to the occasion. Thank you. God bless you.